Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness, and shine within your people here. Joyous light of heaven. Jesus Christ. Welcome to the service of Holden Evening Prayer coming from Gloria Day Lutheran Church in Arnold, Maryland. Welcome as we come together as the body of Christ in this way. As has been said over and over in many ways, these are indeed extraordinary days. Days that hold new news seemingly every hour. So for this next half hour, as we experiment with this new way of being together, may you simply rest in God's embrace as the Spirit leads you. For those of you who love this setting of the Vespers Liturgy, may its familiar cadence and flow nourish you. For those for whom this setting, this service is new, may its cadence and flow nourish you. It is a hope that should we be together this way again next week or for weeks to come, a bulletin, songbook, in some form would be available to accompany this time together. But for tonight, may you simply rest in God's embrace as the Spirit leads you. Thanks to Debbie Green for playing, to Michelle Schiffler for managing the technical elements of our time together, 
and to Kathy Renfro, serving as cantor and congregation this evening. Those who attended our previous midweek Lenten services know that we were journeying through a series named Ruchid, focusing on the prior Sunday's Gospel reading. As we navigate the unsettled waters of this particular time, however, I've chosen to suspend that series, having been led to the book of Hebrews for means that shall become clear. So if you have a Bible, you might want to make your way there to Hebrews. It's the 10th book from the end. But whether with a bulletin or a Bible or a hymnal or not, again, may you simply rest in God's embrace as the Spirit leads you this night. So if you have that Bible or hymnal, I'd invite you to get it out and read or sing along now as we share together in Psalm 141 which will be followed by a time of silence for reflection. May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense. And may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. Dear family and faith, grace to you and peace from God our Creator and our loving Savior, Jesus the Christ. 
So as I said when we began, I have been led in this time of social distancing to the book of Hebrews. And that's because of chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, which say, Let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. Well, meeting together in person today and for whatever time to come has now come with necessary thoughtfulness and intentionality, if not limitedness. We've all read the rules, I trust. And so, just as so many people are making adjustments to this new way of being, the Spirit is leading us, the body of Christ, to be creative in how we not neglect to meet together. Here we are, online, Phone calls are being made, emails exchanged, Facebook posts actually commented on in positive and good ways, encouraging one another, as the writer of Hebrews encouraged. And having been driven to this passage of Hebrews about meeting together and encouraging one another, well, I started taking note of those other passages in that book that I've highlighted over the years, Passages that speak words of promise, encouragement, and hope that I decided I needed to share tonight. Such as the verse just before the one I started with. It's worth highlighting and underlining, if you have your Bible open, Hebrews, the 10th book from the end, chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering. For God, who has promised, is faithful. Yes, God is faithful. Great is God's faithfulness, I think I've sung. Can you rest in that embrace this night? Something echoed in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, that says, God has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. Can you rest in that embrace this night? Or how about this from Hebrews, 10th book from the end of the Bible. Chapter 4, verses 14 and 16. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Mercy and grace. Can you rest in that embrace? Interestingly, there were a couple of verses I had highlighted that seemed particularly relevant to our current situation. In Hebrews 10, chapter 4, verses 9 through 10, it says, So then a Sabbath rest still remains for the people of God, for those who enter God's rest also cease from their labors, as God did from His. I know this whole not-in-person thing isn't about sitting on the couch and taking a nap. But might we embrace more alone, family unit time as a Sabbath gift? Something clearly important to God. How much more important for us? Can you rest in the embrace of Sabbath this night? And then, considering how we are together physically or not, there is this from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 and 2. Let love be mutual and let it continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing so, some have entertained angels without knowing it. So, how might others rest in your embrace this night? And finally, perhaps the most important words, I think, from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 8 through 9, as I reminded the children on Sunday, 
Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It is well for the heart to be strengthened by grace. Yes, no matter what changes, the chances come our way. Jesus Christ is the same as you have come to know him in word and song, in bread and wine, fellowship and prayer. May you rest in his embrace this night and always. And now, before a time of silence for reflection, before the next song, I offer this blessing from Hebrews. It's the 10th book from the end. Chapter 13, verses 20 and 21. Now may the God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you complete in everything good, so that you may do his will, working among us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be given glory forever and ever. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. An angel went from God to a town called Nazareth, to a woman whose name was Mary.
great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and light, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God. May God create a bless us and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.